welcome to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. This is a city with 2.3 million people that lies at the intersection of three rivers, nicknamed the Steel City and also City of Bridges. It's also known for being the birthplace of Andy Warhol, and it's a city that's making a huge comeback since the steel industry. Today, we're going to explore some of the city's top breweries and coffee shops that are helping to reshape the neighborhoods of Pittsburgh. Let's go check it out. Our first stop is a neighborhood called Lawrenceville, where we're going to visit one of the newest breweries in town. I'm in Pittsburgh today and we are heading on a beer tour. Our first stop is Cinderland's. Hi. I'm Paul, I'm Paul Schneider. I'm the head brewer here at Cinderland's. Uh, we're a brew pub that opened in uh, late November of last year. Uh, we make all the beer that we serve here in this very room. Uh, one of the smallest commercial breweries that I've ever seen um, that has still a full feature set of equipment. These are vegan chicharrones. Now we head to the historic steel town of Braddock to check out Brew Gentleman, which opened in 2014. We're at Brew Gentleman. They have some really good brews. It's here in Braddock, outside of Pittsburgh. in Steelworks. So uh, that was the original steel mill that uh, Andrew Carnegie built and uh, it's still it is still in uh, use today. Uh, while we were building the brewery Ace and I actually lived in a house across the street from that for three years. And this is in an area that is being revitalized and gentrified. It's a very creative space right now. Andrew Carnegie made Braddock the heart of his steel empire with the construction of the Edgar Thompson Steelworks. It grew to become a thriving industrial and commercial hub for over a half century. When the American steel industry collapsed in the 70s and 80s, the population of Braddock went from 20,000 to 2,000 in 2010. Much of the town was abandoned. Little by little, the city is rebuilding itself with businesses such as urban farms and breweries. This right here is the Braddock Farms, and then right there is the steel mill. So this is by Grow Pittsburgh, and they use this to supply a lot of the local restaurants here. And it's also used to rejuvenate the neighborhood. So we have okra, tomatoes, and peppers growing right here next to the steel mill. So because the rent is so cheap here, a lot of creative businesses have been able to come in, but gentrification, of course, is a double-edged sword. Companies like Brew and Gentlemen are really helping to revitalize the communities. New housing developments here in Braddock. They have some urban farms, which is really cool. They have some old industrial stuff. Lots of changes. What are your favorite breweries in Pittsburgh? Comment below. Now we head seven miles southeast of downtown Pittsburgh, directly across from the river to a borough known as Homestead. This town is also known for its steel factory, Homestead Steelworks, which Andrew Carnegie bought in 1883. It has since been turned into a mall. This borough is also rebounding. Many new businesses are moving in, including the Coffee Roasters, Steel Valley Roasters. Neighborhood called Homestead, and we just went to the Steel Valley Roasters. Brand new coffee shop in town, and now we're gonna check out Voodoo Brewery. Both Voodoo Brewery and Steel Valley Coffee Roasters create a community and creative space in a much needed part of the neighborhood. This building used to be a historic firehouse and the owners turned it into a funky creative space. Uh, by the local municipality. I invested in a brewing company when I got back from the war. 
back in Afghanistan in 2010. This building that had raccoons and squirrels and syringes and all kinds of horrible things in this spot. And it was also a statement of the failure of the Steel Valley. Okay, so the owner purchased this building for how much, Mike? $8,500. This vintage firehouse building came complete with a city jail that's been turned into booths for the brewery. It's literally, it's like being in jail, but you're actually at a bar. And I'm loving all this art on the murals. Look at this. This is kind of a down and out neighborhood. Still has really cool architecture, but uh, created a lot of opportunity for business owners to come in and make something cool. Now we head to a family-owned and operated brewery called Grist House Craft Brewery. Here. This brewery is known for being dog-friendly, and they have a spacious outdoor beer garden. The community atmosphere is what really makes this craft brewery special. Be sure to check the links in the description below for a list of all the breweries featured in this video. The next morning, it's time to grab breakfast at a neighborhood cafe called the Pear in the Pickle. So right down this neighborhood is Pear and Pickle. Cool little cafe and coffee shop. Cool little deck up here in this very underrated neighborhood. I got a peppermint iced tea. This cafe offers a community space and an old-fashioned feel with hip touches such as Stumptown Coffee. A few blocks down the street, we find the colorful murals known as Randy Land, created by Randy Gilson in 1995. These are the Mexican war streets. Look at all the details. There's the Heinz building, the park, the rivers, all the little neighborhoods. This funky neighborhood is filled with row houses and gardens, known as the Mexican War Streets, named after the battles of the Mexican-American War. Look at this little neighborhood garden. We're heading to Commonplace Coffee. The hub of this neighborhood is undoubtedly Commonplace Coffee, which roast and brew their own coffee. They created a friendly space for locals and out-of-towners alike to meet, greet, and work. Now we head to one of the must-see sites of Pittsburgh, the Warhol Museum. Is the Warhol Museum. So Berlin, there's a photo booth here. Hear no evil, speak no evil, see no evil. Yeah. Humble beginnings. Mr. Andy. Andy Warhol was born in Pittsburgh in 1928, and this museum commemorates him with seven stories of his works. One of the coolest parts of the Andy Warhol Museum is the interactive space called Silver Clouds Art Installation. Inside the room, metallic balloons float freely throughout the space, casting reflections along the walls and make you feel as if you're part of the art. Andy Warhol was a leader of the pop art movement where he captured many famous figures in his silkscreen prints. One of the most surprising parts of the museum was seeing the pen and ink prints from Andy Warhol's world trip in the 50s where he went to Thailand, Cambodia, and Japan. Our trip to Pittsburgh is not complete without one last brewery where we visit the long-standing brewery called Penn Brewery. Right here you can 
fancy Welcome to Troy Hill, and then the Heinz Ketchup Factory. This is the Penn Brewery, and this is in Troy Hill. Penn Brewery brews classic lagers and German-style beers, adhering to the strict quality standards of the 16th century Bavarian purity laws. But this is the entrance to one caves. of the lagering caves that are in this complex. Um, on this level, this ground level here, uh, there are four main lagering caves that go back into the hillside. This is one entrance. Way back inside of one of these caves is these old original lagering barrels from the 1860s or 1870s. Um, and you can see the scale, the size of these barrels, because that's my partner, Stuart, standing beside them. So we're at the Penn Brewery, and these are the original lagering caves used in the late 1800s, because when there was no refrigeration, they used to store the beer in here to keep it cool and actually bring ice from the river. And look at this beautiful patio used during the summer. And if you're not able to grab a pint at Penn Brewery, there is one at the airport. We hope that you get a chance to check out Pittsburgh and these awesome neighborhood spots very soon. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button and subscribe for more travel videos.